We're gonna show you guys how to make our new chaffle recipe for 2023. It's crispy, it's crunchy, and it has less than one net carb. Can you improve on perfection? We are going to today. Sarah and I started making chaffles way back in 2020, and we perfected our recipe in 2021. That's when we uploaded this video where we said, we added this to our chapels and it changed everything because it really did. It took your normal chapel from soggy and wet and moist to crispy and crunchy and perfect for a wide range of applications. We love our chapel and we know that you guys do too because you've said so in our comment section and you've said that we make the best chapels out there and they have changed your life. I'm not kidding. You guys have said that. And since 2021, Sarah and I have been making chapels ever since. And in this video, we're gonna bring down that carb count of our chapel even more while keeping that crispy texture. When you're on keto, we know that carbs are pretty much the most important thing. So we're gonna go through how we're improving on our original recipe and bringing down that carb count. In our old chapel, we used shredded cheese. This is the easiest and laziest way to make your chapels because you don't have to shred your cheese. Companies tend to use ingredients to keep the cheese shreds from sticking together and clumping. And when those things are coated around the cheese, they add to the carb count. So when you use shredded cheese, it has carbs in it. In our new Keto Twins Chapel, we're gonna be shredding our own cheese to eliminate those excess carbs. In our original Keto Twins Chapel, we use almond flour, and that's just because almond flour was the most neutral tasting flour we could find at the time. It's the most widely available, and it was just what we used for years. And almond flour has about five grams of total carbs, two grams of net carbs per one fourth of a cup. Almond flour has about 170 calories per one fourth cup, which is a lot of calories if you're eating a lot of chaffles, which we do. Meet our new friend, lupin flour. Lupin beans are beans. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Have you guys ever seen lupin flowers? They're gorgeous. I want some in my garden. You know what I mean? Lupin flower has about 120 calories per one fourth cup and about one net carb. The only thing that I will say is that if you have an allergy to peanuts, you may have a reaction to lupin flower. So keep that in mind. If you have a reaction to peanuts, stick to almond flour or even whey protein isolate. So the next couple ingredients, they're gonna stay the same, whether it's from the old recipe or the new recipe, and that's xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is actually becoming way more popular in keto baking, and it gives a gluten-like elasticity to breads when there's no gluten in them. And we love using xanthan gum in sauces and in different bread recipes. It says here that xanthan gum, half a teaspoon, is about five calories and has one total carb, one gram of fiber, that means zero net carbs per serving. And last up, we used to use egg whites from actual eggs in our recipe. And we have switched because we have found the more convenient way to make these and to have the ingredients on hand all the time and not wasting anything was to use egg whites from the carton. These are just the egg whites from Amazon Fresh. I just love having this on hand. It makes it so much easier to make chaffles. But before we make our chaffles, we're gonna talk about the sponsor of this video, Element. Element is a delicious electrolyte drink mix with everything that you need and nothing that you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Sarah and I drink Element every single day, and we have been for years because we love the way it tastes and it helps us in our ketogenic lifestyle. That's because when you go into ketosis for the first time, you shed a lot of water, and inside that water are your electrolytes. This can leave you feeling tired, have muscle cramps, and nausea, also known as the keto flu. Element replenishes your electrolytes so that you feel better. Sarah and I love all of the flavors of Element, but our absolute favorites are the citrus salt, orange salt, and raspberry salt. Right now, Element is offering our community a free sample pack. It looks like this so that you can try all of the flavors. That's eight single serving packets free with any order from Element. This way you can try all the flavors or share some with a salty friend. In order to get this deal, you must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Keto Twins. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the equipment that you're gonna to need to be making your new chaffles. We are going to be using the four unit Dash Mini Waffle Maker. We've been using the little ones from Dash for a long time, and I upgraded to the four unit waffle maker a, quite a while ago, I wanna say a year ago, and I have been using it ever since and dragging it over here. Sarah liked using her single Dash mini waffle makers that she bought, 
but I think after using them so many times, they kind of became unreliable. So Sarah was finding that her chaffle makers were getting too hot, causing her chaffles to be almost burnt. And so because they're kind of like a, on the cheap side, I would caution against keeping these for too long, honestly, because they might become unreliable in terms of like the way that they're heating up and you might be burning your chaffles, right? And so Sarah sprung finally to get the four unit waffle maker and that's what inspired this video today. And we are going to be leaving links in the description below the video if you guys wanna check out any of these products or if you guys are ready to upgrade into the four unit dash mini waffle maker. So here's how we're changing up our chaffle recipe. We have shredded our own cheese, which is gonna save some carbs. We're using lupin flour instead of almond flour. And because this is more like a powder, we're actually using less lupin flour than we do almond flour. That's how we're changing this recipe. And then the liquids and the xanthan gum, they're gonna stay the same. So in this bowl, I have two cups of shredded mozzarella that we've shredded by hand. I'm gonna add in two total tablespoons of lupin flour, and I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of xanthan gum. I'm gonna mix that until it's thoroughly combined because the second that xanthan gum comes into contact with liquid, it will just start becoming all gooey. So you're gonna to wanna to get that fully combined. So I like to just toss it together with a fork before adding in our egg whites. I'm gonna be adding in four tablespoons of egg whites to this mixture, and then I'm gonna mix it all together again. We're heating up our chaffle maker and we're good to go. We've tried experimenting with a lot of different volumes for our chaffles, and we've found that about two tablespoons or one eighth cup is the perfect amount to create a nice, thin, airy chaffle. So this is the perfect amount. We can leave a link to this below. It came in a set on Amazon, but so many of you guys use this specific measurement, but it's about two tablespoons. I'm gonna take a heaping amount of the mixture and I'm gonna start putting it in the chaffle maker. And I'm just gonna take the back of a spoon and kind of push it into the chaffle maker. This is not like a very runny batter where it's just gonna fill all the crevices easily. You're gonna kind of wanna guide it to spread across the chaffle maker and as it melts, it will do that. Mm. All right, it's getting there, it's getting there. All right, are you ready to close? Yep. All right, I'm gonna close this. Okay. So I've closed the lid of our chaffle maker. We're gonna cook these for about four minutes and you're gonna start to see all of this steam kind of die off and it's gonna look kind of dry. And when you open the chaffle maker, it shouldn't be sticking. If you're opening it, you're opening it too soon and it's gonna be really hard to get your chaffles to form because you're opening it and the cheese is spreading and then you're closing it again. So really have patience and just wait at least four minutes before opening this thing. Okay. You can take a fork and kind of just go wee 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 to get them out of there. See? Sound effects are not necessary. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, just kidding. This one is stuck upside <laughs> down. And guess what? You go like that. Good. Great. And as Sarah would say, there's a presentation side and an ugly side. And that's how we make them. All right. So are they brown? Yes. But this is a sign that they're crispy, people. We have enough to make six chaffles. We're gonna continue making them. We're gonna be spreading a little herbed cream cheese on top. And we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna answer some more of your questions about our chaffles. So here we have our new and improved chaffles. And as you can see, they're the color of the rainbow. Well, not really. Some of them are darker than others. That's because they were left in 30 or 40 seconds longer than their lighter counterpart. It doesn't really change the taste of them all that much, I would say, but the color in this one is definitely more golden brown and this is dark brown. But as you can hear, they're very, very crunchy sounding. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. I actually wanted to redo this video because a couple of weeks ago, one of my friends, Nick, he's been a long time supporter of our channel probably the first subscriber, and he's always been really intimidated by making a chaffle, and I made him one, and he thought it was amazing, so thank you, Nick. And he was like, I think that I was just intimidated by the whole process, so why not revisit this and show you guys how easy it is to make our chaffles? 
And not only that, we have been making them a little bit differently since we made the original video in 2021. So we wanted to show you how we were bringing down those carbs. I mean, like I said, the original chaffel had about three net carbs per chaffel, and it doesn't seem like that much, but when you're on keto, you wanna cut those carbs where you can. And we wanted to be able to do that without sacrificing the taste, and more importantly, the texture. The taste is neutral, and Sarah and I always say, like, if you wanna add garlic, you should mm -hmm. add garlic into this. We've added Old Bay mm -hmm. into this with chives. That was really, really good. We've used cheddar cheese instead of mozzarella cheese. We've used white cheddar instead of mozzarella. So you can even add parsley or something into your chapels. Don't be afraid to experiment with mm -hmm. this recipe. This is a base recipe, and depending on how you like your chapels, you might be able to come up with something way better than ours. This is just the beginning point. Don't let this be your end point. Mm -hmm. And it took us many years to formulate this recipe, and depending on the moisture content of your cheese, you might need to cook it for a little bit right. longer in order to get that moisture to really evaporate. Mm-hmm. Mm. So crispy. Mm -hmm. One of the other questions that we get often is what else can I use chaffles for? Mm -hmm. And we've used them for pretty much any kind of bread replacement that you can think of. As you can see here, we put a little bit of garden vegetable cream cheese on top. It makes a great bagel replacement. You could put an egg on it. We made breakfast sandwiches out of it. We've used it as croutons on top of soups and salads. We've used it for replacements as like a crunchy bread. So we've made like a chicken sandwich with spinach and mm. mayo and provolone. It was one of our favorite sandwiches ever. And basically the options are endless when you think about different ways that you can use chaffles. If you're looking for a crispy bread, use a chaffle instead. That rhymes. I know, that was accidental. <laughs> Another important aspect of this is that I know a lot of you guys food prep and you want to know how to keep the integrity of the chaffle. And we have recommended this cylindrical container and putting it in the refrigerator. That is literally the number one question that we get still. 11 million views later is, do you need to refrigerate chaffles? And the answer is yes. You need to refrigerate chaffles because they're made of cheese and you wouldn't just leave cheese sitting out on the countertop. So you definitely need to refrigerate them if you're gonna save them. We have recommended this cylindrical container and little pieces of parchment paper mm -hmm. to put in between your chaffles. But honestly, if you want our true opinion, if you put these in the refrigerator and eat them days later, they're gonna lose a little bit of their ability to come back every single day. Their crunch factor. Right. And when you go to toast them in the oven or even put them back in the chaffle maker a little bit, they will only be about 70 to 80% as good. So that's why when we eat chaffles now, we pretty much make them fresh every time. If we make chaffles, we're making them fresh that day or at the very most the next day. Yeah. You can always keep the batter, you know, like the mixture in your refrigerator in an airtight container and then just heat up your chaffle maker and make fresh ones. Mm -hmm. I think that the difference is pretty stark. We do think that you can eat them this way and, and put them in the toaster to warm them up, but they're not gonna be like the same. They're not gonna have that same level of crunch. A lot of you guys ask, how do you clean your Dash Mini Waffle Maker? Well, it's very simple. We unplug the Dash Mini Waffle Maker, we get a paper towel and we saturate it with water and a little bit of dish soap. And we just kind of put it in there and close the lid and you'll see the steam starts to break up all that gunk and burnt bits stuck on the inside. And then you can go along and you can take a dry sponge or even a damp sponge and kind of run it to get all those excess pieces out of there. I wouldn't necessarily dunk your Dash Mini Waffle Maker or anything like that, but if you use like a damp sponge or anything, you should be able to get it pretty clean. We like to do this right after we are done using the waffle maker. So all those bits and pieces don't have time to like solidify and get really hard use a little paper towel just to make sure that it's easier to clean later. So our original chaffles, like we said, had about three net carbs in each chaffle, and these have less than one, which is quite the improvement. They taste pretty much identical, and it's a great way to save on some carbs. So if you guys have any variations that you'd like to try with your travels, leave them in the comments below. We would love to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe. We are really hoping to hit 250,000 subscribers this year. It would mean a lot to us. Subscribing is free, but it's just a way to support our channel. And earlier this year, Sarah and I made the best sandwich ever. It's our favorite sandwich of all time. It's a chicken Florentine chaffle. This sandwich won a million dollars in a recipe contest. And our mom used to make it for us all the time before we were keto. You have to try the sandwich. You can see it in this video right here and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily. I'm Sarah. And, and we, we are, are the Keto, keto Twins signing out. out.